on our journey as we study more about capacitors remember that a capacitor a capacitor is a device that stores electrical charge and then the measure of how powerful how powerful that capacitor is is determined what by what you call its capacitance and for that capacitor to acquire a certain charge then it means you are charging it using a certain PD V therefore any capacitor is storing a certain amount of charge to is charged a potential V and is described by its capacitance C. Here comes we have two capacitors charged to different capacitances to different potential differences and they store different amounts of charges. That is to say, I have a capacitor of capacitance C1 and it stores a charge Q1 and then I also have another capacitor of capacitance C2 and it stores a charge Q2 what happens if I connect these two capacitors together I had my switch there so what happens if I connect them together when these capacitors are connected they assume a parallel arrangement and the PD and the charge redistributes itself throughout the whole system until a common PD is across the, the system. That is to say, the charge, because this may be higher than this, so the charge has to redistribute itself so that finally we have a common PDV that is across the two capacitors and charge must be conserved therefore the initial charge stored is equivalent to the final charge stored uh, that is to say maybe I can say this was the initial arrangement and then afterwards I have another arrangement these are the same capacitors. So this one that was charge one, it is no longer charge one. Maybe you can say it is charge one prime. Of course, the capacitor doesn't change. The one which was charge two is now charge two prime. The capacitor doesn't change. And then the PD across them is now. The peak. We are saying that the initial charge stored is equal to the final charge stored. So what was the initial charge stored? The initial charge stored is charge 1 plus charge 2. What about the final charge stored? Is charge 1 prime plus charge 2 prime. But this one is C1 times the V because you know that charge is C V then this one is also C2 times V and what does it give us? V is common which can be factorized out factorized out and therefore we shall have C1 plus C2 V that is charge 1 plus 
charge two. And as you can see, is that we are given charge one, we are given charge two, we are given C1 and C2. Therefore, this one helps us to know that the potential difference across the combination V will be this one divided by that. Therefore, we shall have V equivalent to charge one plus charge two, then divided by C1 plus C2. This is a very important statement uh, that we shall refer to at some other points as we move on this journey. By the way, we are moving well, and I believe you are understanding. Don't forget to remind others or even inform them that on our channel, all things are available. All the lessons are available. Please click there for all the classes, senior one, senior six, or the science subjects. But particularly, the physics is loaded. Be there. Don't miss it. Okay? So maybe you can take note. I know we have to do what we are used to. Oh. So joining two charge capacitors is what we are looking at. Joining two charges. This one is charged, this one is charged. You join them, what happens? Do they remain the same charge? No. The charge redistributes itself until when the common potential difference is across each of them. Okay? And then when we perform the calculation, come with the, the charge across the, the voltage across both as that and then this one can be used to get anything if any of these quantities is not given and others are given then you can use this as we perform our calculation so um, just after doing this one then you can write this just write this and this maybe you can say this is figure one and then this is Figure two. Okay, so you can say that suppose two charge capacitors or capacitances C1 and C2 are connected as shown in figure one. Suppose two capacitors or capacitances C1 and C2 are connected as shown in figure one, where the corresponding plates are joined together where the corresponding plates are joined together. That means this is the positive plate is joined to the positive plate. The negative plate is joined to the negative plate. So, of course, that will be exactly that. The corresponding plates are joined together. Come on. When the switch K is crossed, when the switch K, this one, I normally call it K, when the switch K is crossed, the charges redistribute themselves. The charges redistribute themselves until a common PD is developed on each of the capacitors. Until a common PD is developed on each of the capacitors, as shown in figure 2. As shown in figure 2. Since the initial total charge, uh, since the initial stored charge is conserved, since the initial stored charge is conserved, i.e., the total initial stored charge, the total. Initial stored charge equals the total final stored charge. The total initial stored charge equals the total final stored charge. Then you can now go to this. This gives us this plus this equals that, which gives this, which gives that, which gives that. So we can finally come to that position. And finally. 
ready? Come to that position. Okay? Uh, I said that when the switch case is crossed, the parallel arrangement is got. Okay? So you can note, note, when switch case is crossed, a parallel arrangement of capacitors is got. You want to do some examples? You want to do some examples? Examples? You can write one. Examples one. A 60 microfarad capacitor is charged at PDV of 120 volts. 60 microfarad is charged at PDV of 120 volts. Full stop. It is then connected across. It is then connected across a thirty microfarad and charged capacitor. Thirty microfarad and charged. So it is not charged. The voltage across it will be zero. It is then connected across the thirty. Microfarad and charge capacitor. Find Roman one. The final PD across the combination. Find the PD across the combination. Roman two. The final charge stored by each capacitor. Charge. Stored by each capacitor and Roman 3, the magnitude of charge lost by the 60 microfarad capacitor. The magnitude of charge lost by 60 microfarad. Capacitor. So we are presented with three. One that a 60 microfarad capacitor is charged to 120 volts. We can just get it here. Okay. Uh, and this is 60 microfarad. Then is connected across this other. Zero is not charged, and then this is uh, thirty microfarad, and we want the final PD across the combination. The final PD across the combination, you can use the formula. You can just state and say that PD will be Q one plus Q two out of C1 plus C2. Q1, you know, charge is CV. Okay? Charge is CV. C will have, V will have. So, it's 60. Exponent is 6. Times V, 120. Plus, the charge is CV. This is 30 times 0. Then, uh, out of C1 plus C2, C1 is 60, is 6, C2 is 30, exponent is 6. And so, if you press this one on calculator very well, uh, <laughs> what do you get? Press it there. Have you? Some of you are stubborn. <laughs> Even when you are not at school, you still want to, to wait and see the answer that you get. Please, press that calculator. If you don't have it, just go and pick it. Pick it. Pick it and do. Yes, just pick it. Pick it and do. Oh, thank you.
somebody has somebody from some part of this country that I don't want to mention has got the answer as 76 volts. Have you got the same? <laughs> I'm laughing at you. I have 80 volts. So that is uh, the PD uh, across the combination. Uh, if you don't want to do it directly, you can just do from the, the first principle, as I may say. And so you can you can say that uh, before the charge before the charge before uh, before uh, joining the two the charge that's the total is CV21 which is 60 exponential like 6 times 120 then plus the 2 2 30 exponent next 6 times 0 of course which remains uh, 60 times uh, 120 okay 120 times 60 exponent next 6 and then the charge after combining the two still the total charge uh, this is now the, they have a common voltage so the, the charge this one will no longer be this this one it will be a certain voltage so it will be CV the first one is C60 exponent in x6 times V plus 30 exponent in x6 times V so you can factorize out V becomes 6 exponent in x6 for a 30 exponent in x6 then times V but you are saying that charge is conserved so this is equal to that Better far 120 times 60 exponent in x6 is equal to exponent in x6 plus 30 exponent in x6 then times v and our v can finally become 120 times 60 over 60 plus 30 so when you do that one Okay, the exponent in x6, they will cancel both times, is here, 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 and there. Okay? Of course, this is 90. Uh, 120, uh, 120 times 6, and have it here, times 60. Then, when you divide by the 90, it still gives you the 80 volts. So, it's up to you. What do you like? If you like this, you do. If you like the other one, you do. I know you are you are used now. You can pause and first copy some of these things down. Then, when you you are done again, continue praying. Okay. So we have got now the final PD across the arrangement. What about the charge stored by each? We have the charge stored by E. We can handle it from here. And as you can see, uh, the charge, for example, it is actually this. Okay? So the charge stored by 160 microfarad is equal to 6 per exponent next 6 then times the V now this is the V times the 80 and that one uh, 
uh, is supposed to, to give us that is 60 times 80. 6 times 8 should be given you know, something like 42. So that will give us 48. Yeah, 4.8 exponent 3. 4.8 exponent negative 3. Charge. Charge is in coulombs. Okay? And then the charge is stored by the thirty microfarads. That will be 30 exponent negative 6 times 80. And I think that should be giving us something like 2.4 yeah something greater than that yes 2.4 exponent negative coulombs okay and then lastly charge lost by the 60 microfarad capacitor this is as simple as uh, uh, drinking water it had its charge, which was big. Now its charge is being shared. So what does that one mean? That means that it is losing. So the charge loss. The charge loss. Equals initial charge. Minus. Final charge and the charge it had initially is the C times V, so it is 120 times 60 exponent next 6. Then finally, of course, uh, the V is 80. Actually, it is now, now this one. We already have it there. 4.8 exponent negative 3. So uh, when we subtract uh, that one, it should be giving you something like 2.4 exponent negative 3. That gives you 2.4 exponent negative 3 columns. That is the charge lost by the 60 microfarad capacitor. Where does that charge go? When it is lost, it goes to this other capacitor. Okay? It goes to that after the redistribution of what? Of charge. That is when capacitors are separated. That is when uh, you work on that. Now, I want to give you what to do or so I want to give you what to do so that you gauge your power you gauge your understanding I believe you have already posted that so we can proceed okay so I uh, can give you some questions and you try it so that you are understanding and then in case there is something you you may fail to understand about the question that you are going to do feel free uh, to contact me on that uh, uh, don't call me send me a message on whatsapp because much of the time I'm in class, so I may not pick you, and I may not even get time to call back. But when you send a message, even if I get to WhatsApp at midnight, at any time, I will respond to you. Then, when I get time, there I can call you and uh, I answer your query. So, get us at that. And we are back. Okay? We are back. BAC. Back science education for Saturday. So we are having uh, this kind of a question. Um, and begin with the diagram. So 
So this is C2, 15 microfarads. This is C1, 10 microfarads. And say this is A, and this is B. So you can have that diagram. Um, in the circuit shown, in the circuit shown, switch K, switch K is open, and the capacitance of A and B, the capacitors A and B have capacitance of 10 microfarads and 15 microfarads respectively, you can see them, and are charged to PD of 25 volts and 20 volts and are charged to PD of 25 volts and 20 volts respectively, that is A and B, are charged to PD of 25 and 20 volts respectively. Full stop. If switch K is then closed, if switch K is then crossed, find the final PD across the combination. If switch K is crossed, find the final PD across the combination and the magnitude of charge lost by capacitor A. The PD across the combination and the magnitude of charge lost by capacitor A. That is meet your course of back certification consultants. Don't forget to, to, to subscribe at back. Just get YouTube to BSC back certification consultants. We keep asking. We have very many things that we do: educational guidance and counseling. Uh, some children sometimes could have some develop some behaviors. You invite us to talk to them. Sometimes you as a child, you feel your parent is not treating you well. Feel free, we can talk to the parent and we know how to make them adjust to suit your understanding as you do the same so that you now have a common PD. They, they move from where they are, you move from where you are. Ah, and finally, the initial stored charge hey, is equal to the final stored charge. All found at Back Science Education Consultants. That is it for now. Let's meet some other time. Be blessed.